Live video games are a new way to play with your community and friends. The Game Master will start a session and stream it live while the viewers play through the platform actions, such as the like, messages and gifts. In addition to be a great way to engage with your community, live video games can help you grow your audience and monetize your content. As developers, it's a great opportunity to create new experiences and games for this new format. Together, we'll discover how to create a Christmas live video game for TikTok with Playroom and React Refiber, making it easy to create a game and stream it live from our phone browser. The viewers will have to help Santa Claus escape from the evil snowman. In this video tutorial, we will target mobile and TikTok, but the concepts and techniques can be applied to desktop and other platforms such as Twitch and YouTube Live. Playroom is experimenting with new multiplayer modes and TikTok is an experimental feature. Let's be part of it and create a game together. Let's start with my getting started template to get a React Refiber project out of the box. Click on code, copy the HTTPS URL, in a terminal run git clone, the address and the folder you want to put it into, r3f tiktok christmas. Once it's done, open the folder, file, open folder. Once you're inside, run yarn to install the dependencies and yarn dev to start the development server. You can click on the link to access it. Now we can see a cube we can rotate around. We are ready to build our project. Let's start by creating our characters. On Polypizza, you can find different assets. We will use ones from Polygonal Mind. You can have a look into, and there are many ones that are Christmas related. For example, Santa, Christmas present, candy cane, Christmas tree, and snowman. Let's start by creating our snowman. They will be the evil characters running after Santa. So click on download. Now we can download the FBX because we will need it to create animation of it with Mixamo. Click OK. Go to Mixamo. Click on login. Connect with your account or create one. Now you should arrive on that page. Be sure you are on animations. Click on upload character and drag and drop the file you just downloaded. Now you should see this to auto rigger the character because by default it doesn't have an armature and bone setup. So we can do it through Mixamo easily. We need to rotate our character to be in front of us. Hit next. And now we must tell it where is the chin. So position it, try to be accurate, but it doesn't have to be perfect. The wrists, let's put them here. Then the elbows, you can see a little triangle where the elbow is on this model. The knees, same apply, you can see a slight difference. And the groin, put it here. The skeleton, you can see we have one part of the hand and the thumb, so two chain fingers should be the best in that case. You have a preview here of what it looks like. And hit next. Now you can see a preview of the auto rigging. If it's not correct, just do the process again. But for us, it looks nice, we can hit next. Now we can see our snowman here. Every animation we will preview will be applied on our snowman. So let's find a zombie one because we want our snowman to look like zombies. Let's find one that is running, so zombie running. We will do the moving ourselves, so check in place. This looks nice. Once you are happy with it, click on download. Format FBX, there is not GLB, so we will do it ourselves using Blender. Kin, we need it. No keyframe reduction. Okay, download. Now we have the animated FBX, we need to convert it to GLB and save the animation. So go to New File, General with Blender. Hit A and delete everything using X and File, Import, FBX. Choose the model you just downloaded and click on Import FBX. You don't have to change the settings here. Now you should see it. You can click on Material Preview to see the colors correctly. Open the low panel here. You can click on Spacebar to play the animation just to check if it's correct. Then click here, switch to Dub Sheet, Action Editor. And here you can see your animation and its name. So let's rename it Run, so we know it's the Run animation. And click on Push Down. That way it will be in the file we will export. If you want to have multiple animation, do it for each animation and push them down for one model. Now, if we go 
to nonlinear animation, we can see all our animations, but we have only one, which is the run one. It's good. We can do file, export, glb, gltf. Inside our project in public, let's create a new folder, name it models, so we keep our project organized and clean. Then we need to include everything so we don't have to limit it. Transform, we can keep the default one. Then in the data, we can check compression, so the model will be lighter. We want the animation. We don't have to do any modification. Just be sure to go inside models and let's name it snowman. And export GLTF 2.0. Now inside our project, we have our snowman here. Let's open the terminal, stop the development server, run npx GLTF JSX public models snowman.glb dash O. So it's for the output component we want to generate using GLTF JSX from our 3D model. Source components, let's name it snowman.jsx dash R public to say it's the root folder is in public. So the path name will be correct and enter. Now, if it worked correctly in components, we have our snowman here. We can save. So my preterior is activated. We will do two things. The first one is to rename it Snowman. And the second one is we want to play the animation automatically. We just want our Snowman to run every time. To play our animation by default, what we will do is to create a use effect to play it when we start, when our component is rendered. We will simply do actions of run. We don't need to make it generic. We know we only have the run animation for that model. Dot play. Now inside our experience, instead of this mesh here, we can display our snowman component and get rid of the mistake here. We can see we have our snowman running, but we have some issues. The camera position is not at the perfect place and we don't have any light, so it appears totally black. To fix the lighting issue, let's add some. We'll add an environment with the preset Sunset. It's a component from Dry Library. Now the colors are nice. Let's change the default camera position. This is the final position I ended up with while creating this tutorial. So it's 0, 8, and 12. And a big field of view so it works correctly on mobile because we target mobile device. Let's choose a background color. I'll be using 333. And we'll also add some fog. So it's easy, fog attach fog, the different args are the color, the distance it starts from, we'll be using 14, and where it ends, where items become invisible past the fog, so 35. Now if we reload, we can see our snowman is running here. If we zoom out, we can see the fog is applied, but it will be our environment later. Now we have one snowman running, Let's add Santa running in front of it. The process is the same. I won't cover it entirely. So go to Polypizza, find the Santa model, click on download and take the FBX and go to Mixamo, rig it and put the right animation you want. Once you have finished the process with Mixamo and Blender, you will have your GLB model here. You can run the same command. It will be GLTF JSX, but instead of using Snowman, We'll use Senta and Senta for the component we will create. Oh, I forget the A every time, so let's do it again. It's Senta and Senta. Now let's remove the wrong one. Open Senta. Rename it Senta. Like we did, we only want our Senta model to run, so we can just create a use effect. Actions of run dot play. You might wonder, the logic is exactly the same. Can't we make it generic? We could, but later on, we will do some logic inside the snowman and the Santa. Now let's go to experience and add our Santa component. We can adjust its position. Position Z is equal to six. And the snowman will be slightly behind. Position Z is equal to minus one. So here is what we have. We have our Santa running, trying to escape the evil snowman behind. And you can see I found a very good running animation for Santa. Now let's start creating our game logic. First, we will need to generate different snowman with a different name for each. For our game logic, we will need a context to have it available everywhere. So let's create a hook inside a hooks folder. Let's name it use game 
index.jsx. We will need a game context. It will be equal to create context from React. Then we will need a game provider, export con game provider. It will take the children, so it will wrap what we will put inside within our context. And we will create a use game method we can call from everywhere inside our project. So const context is equal to use context. I prefer to make it this way. If it's undefined, we will have an error because we need to wrap use game within a game provider. Otherwise, we return the context. This is our boilerplate to have a context for our whole game manager. Inside app, we can wrap everything within a game provider. We'll have access to it inside the canvas and later in the UI. Within our game logic, we will need different variable. The easiest way to manage it is by using a reducer. So we'll name it game state, and we will also have a dispatch method to call action on our game reducer. It's equal to use reducer. We will need a function to call. So let's create it on top of our game provider function game reducer. It takes the state and the action. And by default, let's return the state unaltered. We will change it based on the different actions later. Our reducer, it needs uh, this function here. So game reducer, where we will put our logic to change our state and the default value of the state. So we'll have a status, which will be by default start, but the default value we will have are start, playing and game over. We will also need a timer. We won't use it directly, but we will need it later. And we will need our snowman. So it will be an array of snowmen. To make it simple to adjust the different snowmen we have, let's create a variable, const nb snowman, and let's put it to eight for the moment. Then before generating our different snowmen, let's create a function to generate a, a snowman name. So function generate random snowman name. We'll create an array with the different names we can have that are all Christmas related. Copilot helped me write it. And we will return possible names of a rendit that comes from 3JS between zero, so the first one, to possible names dot length minus one, so the last item. So we are sure we have one of those names here. Now let's generate our different snowmen at the beginning. We'll use the structurate of array based on the number of snowmen. And we will fill it with a name, which will be equal to generate random snowman name. So every snowman, it will just contain a name, which is random. Currently, we don't need more information about it. Now, to be able to use our game state variables anywhere using our use game hook, we need to return the values here. Instead of just returning the game state, we'll do something cleaner. We will get the different variables here. For example, snowman, the status, the timer, we'll get them from our game state and we will put them inside our game provider value. So we'll have game state dispatch, which is the function to alter our state, snowman, status and timer. No, we don't need the game state. So only dispatch, snowman, status and timer. Now inside our experience, we can get our different snowmen and render them. So const snowman is equal to use game. And now instead of just having one snowman here, we will loop through our different snowmen. So snowman.map. And for each of them, we'll have the snowman information and its index. We will return a group which will contain our snowman. So position Z, we will put it on the group instead. And we will impact our position X using the index here. So we'll use I for the moment. And we need to define a key because we are repeating an item. We'll just use the index. I prefer to name it index. So here and here. But now if we reload, we can see we have only one snowman. And it's not the first one. It's not the one at zero. It's because we are using a skin mesh. And when we redisplay the same skin mesh, it won't clone it. So it will make the previous one disappears. To fix it, let's go to our snowman component. We'll need to use another library. So yarn add three stdlib. 
restart our development server, and we will need to use those two lines of code. It's clone, it's equal to use memo of skeleton utils, which comes from the library we just installed, and we will get the nodes from the clone we just generated with that method. So it's using the scene. So from our GLTF, we will get the scene and the nodes, we generate them from the clone. And here it's using the nodes, so it should be ready to use. Now we can see our different snowmen, but their position isn't correct with what we want to do. Let's create some logic for it. So instead of returning directly a component, we will return a function that will return our component. So here it's return. So here we can code some logic. Let's create different variable we have access everywhere inside our app. Const, so export const, snowman columns. We want maximum four snowman per row. We will also do snowman space between column, so space column. We'll put 2.5 and also snowman space row is equal to four. Now inside our experience, we'll use those variables to change the Z and X position of our snowman. To know on which column our snowman is, so const column is equal to index modulo and our variable snowman columns. To know on which row we are, this is math.floor of index divided by snowman columns. Then we can find our X position, its column multiplied by snowman space column. Now our position X, we can assign X pause. And for the Z position, we can remove a row multiplied by snowman space between row. Now we can see we have our snowman here looking good, but we want them to be behind snowman. So we want to center them. Currently they are from zero to I don't know where. We want them to be minus half width to half width. To do this, we need to change our X position, so we'll remove half of it. So it's snowman columns minus one multiplied by snowman space column divided by two. And now our scary snowmen are running behind our center perfectly. Now we can display their name on top of them because it's the game logic will be to type their name in the chat and it will kill the different snowmen. So for our snowman, we'll pass it the snowman information so we can just create snowman is equal to snowman. Let's open the component. Here we'll get snowman and the rest of the properties like before. Inside our main group here, we'll be able to display the name. We'll be using a text with the snowman name and a mesh standard material with a red color. We don't need an uppercase later here. For the font size, we'll set it to 0.42. And to make it looks good, we will need to add a font. You can choose one from Google Fonts, download it, and inside your project, create a new folder, name it Fonts, and drag and drop your font. So I chose Poppins Bold. Let's assign it. So fonts slash Poppins Bold dot TTF. Now we have the name of each snowman here. Reindeer, Bell, Love, perfect. We need it to be on top of the character and we want it to follow where our camera is looking at. So it's every time uh, readable for the player. To do it, we'll use the billboard component. It's a component that will, what is wrapped inside will always face the camera. And we assign the Y position to four. So it's on top of the head of the snowman. And it looks nice, we have our different snowman character names. Let's make it less dull by having each snowman running at a different time frame. To do this, what we can do is actions of a run dot time, it's where we are playing our animation, is equal to math dot random multiplied by actions of run dot get clip dot duration. So we'll get a value based on the duration of our clip. So it will start randomly anywhere in the run animation. Now it looks like a real zombie running after us because each one has its own running pace. Before jumping to the game logic, just let's add the background scene. This is the stage I prepared. This will be one big block that we will repeat over and over. So it will move and we'll have another block next that will move to make an infinite scroll animation. I used the KKit Halloween bit to create this. 
using the different assets provided for free. But of course, I will provide you the final stage I prepared. The model I prepared is named gameboard.glb. Let's generate a component from it, so like we did before. Gameboard.jsx. And same applies here. We can start our development server and hide it. Go to our Gameboard component, rename it Gameboard. Now we can add it inside our experience. So Gameboard, OK. And we have our Gameboard visible, but we need to animate it to make it look realistic. So what we want to do is to have multiple Gameboard, one after the other, and to make it infinite scroll. Let's go inside our Gameboard and in a use frame, do the logic to animate its position. The use frame will need the delta time. And before doing the animation, we'll need two variables. We will need the scroll speed, which is the speed of the scene in the background moving, because we don't move our characters, we just move the background. Let's set it to 10. And we will need the length of our game board. So game board length, let's put 100 for the moment. Now inside our game board, we need a reference on our group to animate it. So it will equal to ref const reference is equal to use ref. And now in our use frame, ref.current.position.z minus equal scroll speed multiplied by delta. And if our ref.current.position.z is below minus two multiplied by game board length, we will go back to game board length position on the z-axis. So before trying it, let's add the other game boards. So in experience, we'll have three game board. So we are sure we never see uh, the void. One will be at position Z will be game board lens. And another one will be at minus game board lens. And let's comment the fog so it will be easier to visualize what is happening. So what we have is we have our stage scrolling behind. But the space between the scenes is wrong. We need to find the right value. And once one is over, it's going back to the first position, making it infinite. You need to find the right game board length value. But I found it's 56. Now, if we reload, we can see that it appears like one big line. And when it disappears, when it's too far, you will see a jump and it will come back in front of it here. OK, let's re-enable the fog to really see the cool effect we are making. Now we have that nice effect of object fading into the darkness. So it hides the fact that we are moving our stage back to the first position. By the way, we are targeting mobile device, so we should see something like this and not the big screen every time. Now let's start implementing our game multiplayer logic. To easily get the multiplayer data from TikTok, we will use Playroom SDK. It's a library you can use to enable multiplayer within your different games. We will be using their TikTok Live feature, but in another tutorial, we create a multiplayer mobile game with the joystick feature. And it's also compatible with other framework. We will be using React Refiber, but it supports Vanilla 3.js, directly React games, Unity, Play Canvas, Godot, Phaser, Kaboom, Pixie.js, and Spline. Let's start by installing it, yarn add playroom kit, and follow the instruction to use it. So go to TikTok Live. It's entirely free, so we don't have a lot to do. We just have to copy the code demo here. So it's this use effect. We need to do insert coin live mod TikTok. And on TikTok Live event, we'll get events of what is happening in our live. Let's copy it here. Now let's go to the game manager paste the code. So we have the use effect with the async function, but let's separate it to have a debug mode. So const setup tick TikTok is equal to, we'll take the async function from here. So we'll call setup TikTok and the async function. So we have the insert coin from Playroom Kit and on TikTok Live event, and we are logging the events we have. Add card is from their demo. We don't need it. Now, because we call insert coin with the TikTok mode, it automatically shows us this screen. So we need to enter a TikTok account from which we want to start a live. They provide a test one. So if we use test, we'll have fake events so we can create our game 
and debug it with fake events before starting a real live. Click on launch. We have waiting for stream. And now we have TikTok live event. So we have the type. It's a like, chat, or gift. And we have all the data inside. The user photo URL, the username. And when it's a chat event, we have inside comment, the text that the user typed inside the live. What a great performance. Perfect. So this is our player input to interact with our live streaming game. So they don't have to install the game, they just watch the live. They type with chat, they send gifts, they send likes, and it will impact our game here. We will look for chat messages when it's the name of a snowman. We will kill it and increase its counter inside the leaderboard. But to simplify the development process, let's turn it off right now and add a debug mode so we can trigger chat, gift, or like events manually with the UI. Let's go to app.jsx, export const debug mode. We'll set it to true for now. Inside our use game, we, we will call setup TikTok only if debug mode isn't true. So if not debug mode, we can call setup TikTok. So let's start by creating our UI. If you know my channel, you know I'm a big Tailwind lover. So let's follow the install process for Vit. We need those variables and Tailwind in it. Yarn add, paste the variable. So Tailwind CSS, but CSS auto prefixer. We run the Tailwind in it. We should be good, yarn dev. The next step is to change the Tailwind config.js that has been generated. We need to replace the content. It's in Tailwind config.js content. We replace it to tell Tailwind on which files it interacts with. So index.html and in source, JS, TS, JSX, and TSX, based on if you are using JavaScript or TypeScript. And we need to add those directives into our CSS file. Go to index.css and on top of the file, paste it. Now Tailwind is set up correctly, we can create our UI component. So source components, let's name it ui.jsx. Export const ui is equal to, for now let's return null. And inside our app, next to the canvas, let's add our UI. Let's create our UI. Instead of returning null, we'll return a main component, which will be fixed on top of everything with a flex and stretch. And inside we'll put our different content. On top of our UI, we'll have the leaderboard. Currently we didn't set it up, so we will fill it later, but, but let's create our ref to it. Okay, then below the leaderboard, we'll have our main content. So we'll have a div containing our different buttons. So we need to know if we are in debug mode and we need the status. So how do we get the status? We get it from our use game state, use game. What do we need? So we have one button to call an attack. We need to know what player is doing it. So we'll create a fake user variable. Let's create it on top. We have our fake user with the username and an avatar image. It's like we do a chat. So we need to type a snowman name. We'll take one randomly from the different snowmen. So let's get the snowman from our use game hook and we take one randomly between the different snowmen. We don't care if it's alive or not, like a real player that could play at the same time of another. So we have the chat button, then we have the like button. What we do is we, we will dispatch a like from a player. And we also have a gift. We will dispatch a bomb from our player. Of course, you can add more logic based on the value of a gift. Currently, we will treat all gift equally. To be able to see our UI, we need the status to be playing, but we didn't do the loading action. So let's make it. So on top of it, if status is start, we will display save Christmas from the evil snowman, the different way to play the game. So if you type a snowman, it will kill it. If you like, it will kill one if there is still one alive. And if you send a gift, you will drop a magical bomb. And when we press the start button, we'll dispatch the start method. This is what will interest us right now. So now we can see our start screen over our experience. What we can do is at the starting point, we wrap everything we need inside this scene. So the game board, the snowman and the center within a group. And this group will be visible only if we are playing. So if status is equal to playing. So it will load everything and play it, but it will be invisible. So we get the status from use game. 
Now we have only our UI. To make it look a bit better, we can add another font. Again, from Google Fonts, I got the integration code to use Poppins font. So we only need Poppins here. And inside our Tailwind config for the theme, we'll add the font family for the sense. We'll be using Poppins and Sans Serif. Now it looks a bit better. Still, it's not perfect, but it's a good starting screen. We have the start button, but we need to call the dispatch function. Inside our UI here, we need to get the dispatch from the use game hook. And let's handle our first dispatch method. So when we press start, the type of action is start. Inside use game, our reducer function here. You can use a switch if you want to based on the action type, but I will be using if statement. If action type is equal to start, then we will return our state, but we will update the status to playing. Now let's reload. If we press start, we have our game starting and we have the different button to trigger actions here. Let's handle the chat, like and gift, but we want them to work only if we are currently playing. So if state that status isn't playing, we will return the state. And below, we will handle our other action. So if action type is equal to like, or if action type is equal to attack, we can handle the logic of the like and attack in the same place. Because we will update our snowman, let's do a copy of them. Date.snowman. We will go through all our snowmen. So for let e is equal to zero below snowman.lens. First, we need to check that our snowman isn't dead. So if is snowman attackable, and we pass it the snowman, and either our action.type is alike, so we can we don't have to type its real name, or or it means we are in an attack mode. So snowman dot name is equal to action dot name, which is what the user will input to lowercase because on mobile device often it is capitalizing the first letter. So this is our main condition to be able to perform an attack on a snowman. So if the condition match our snowman of i will be equal to its previous value snowman dot i, it will be dead, will store its test time to date dot now we'll say killed by and we'll get action.player inside the payload of our dispatch we have the player and death cause to know if it's from a bomb or a like or an attack we store action.type then we can instantly return our state and our new snowman so snowman because we already destructured it it's a copy so we can modify it so we didn't create that method is snowman attackable let's create it on top here function is snowman attackable it takes a snowman and we just check it's not dead now let's also handle the bomb attack if action dot type is equal to bomb we want to kill all the snowmen alive so like we did here we do a copy of all the snowmen we iterate through all the snowmen if it is attackable we will do exactly the same here so snowman.i, it will be a copy. The death cause will be the bomb because it's coming from action type and it should be good. But this time we don't return directly inside the if because we want to go through all snowmen. So we return them after here, return our state and the updated version of snowman. Now to be able to try it and to visualize it, we need inside our experience to show when a snowman is dead. So inside our loop, we already have the snowman information here, so it will re-render our snowman component and we will adapt its position and its visibility based on its state. Let's add a use frame. We will need the delta time. So if our snowman is dead, we will automatically move our group position dot z to the background. So let's say minus 40. But if it's alive, we will make it lerp toward our center. So it will be position point z is equal to lerp from math utils group dot current dot position dot z towards zero and for the speed we'll use delta multiplied by 1.2 now let's try it if we do some like we can see that disappearing one after another if we do a chat it takes one randomly and if we send a bomb with the gift it kills everyone so it's working correctly 
But now we need to respawn our snowman after a delay. So next to our number of snowmen, we will add two variables. Snowman respawn time, it will be three seconds. It is when it will start come back to our user, but we also need to know when we can attack it back. So snowman attackable time after respawn. And let's say almost two seconds. So 100, 1800. Now we have those variables for our is snowman attackable function, we can improve it and check if it is respawned and if the delay is okay. We can add that condition to check that the respawn time and our current time is over the time after respawn. Now to respawn our different snowmen inside our game, we will create a use effect with a set interval. So every 100 milliseconds, we will want to check if we need to respawn one of our snowmen. So what we will do is we dispatch type respawn. And to cancel our set interval, we'll name it game loop and we will return a clear interval of game loop. So if use effect is re-triggered, it will cancel our previous set interval. And now let's go back to our dispatch function. So our reducer here, it can be on the top because we want to respawn it even if the game is finished. So if action.type is respawn, we will need to get the current date, date.now. We do a copy of our different snowmen. And what we will do is we return our state and snowman will be equal to snowman.map. So we check if it is dead and if the death time minus our current time is above the respawn time. So if three seconds happen, then we can respawn it. So we will return our snowman. Dead will be to false. We will store when it respawned. So respawn time will be equal to now. And we will generate a new name. So it change every time. Generate random snowman name. If it's not the case, we just return the snowman unaffected. We don't need to copy it back because we want to keep the same reference to it. Let's try it. Press start. Let's kill many of them. We wait and we can see they are appearing back. They are running closer to center based on the lerp we made. If we send a gift, they all die. And then they come back with new names. Now we have the game mechanic. What we want to do is to add a leaderboard to count the number of snowmen each player killed. To create the leaderboard, let's add it to our default state. We'll add a variable leaderboard. It will be an array. It will contain the player and their score, and it will be empty by default. We will fill it when we kill snowmen. Let's go to our game reducer and affect the leaderboard when we do a bomb. So we need to count how many snowmen we killed. So const, oh no, not const, let killed is equal to zero. And if we killed it only if it was at a cable, killed plus plus then we need to generate our new leaderboard. So leaderboard, it will be a copy of our previous one. If we have some killed, because if we don't, we don't need to update the leaderboard. First, we want to find the player with the right username. We got the player from the action and we got the one inside our leaderboard. If we find one, we will just update its number of kills based on the one it killed and its previous value. If we don't have one, we need to insert it into our leaderboard by copying our player with its information and its number of kills. Then finally, we will need to sort our leaderboard based on the highest number of kills. And don't forget to return the updated leaderboard here. That was it for the bomb. Let's do it for the like. So first we'll copy our leaderboard. Then before returning, the logic is exactly the same. We try to find the player. If it exists, we increase its number of kills, but only by one this time. If it doesn't, we create it with one kill. We sort it and we don't forget to return our leaderboard. So our game state is updated with the right leaderboard. I forgot to mention, but we are using a reducer to have all our game state, but it's really the limit we can do. Maybe we could use Redux to handle our state a better way, but using separated states would be very painful to handle. Now our leaderboard is ready. If we go to our UI to be able to debug it, we need to display it. So let's get the leaderboard. And inside our leaderboard handler here, 
we will display our different players. So we will map through all our player in the leaderboard and we will display a gradient based on the position and display the user photo URL, its username and its number of kills. Here are the different gradients I prepared. So we have something look like gold for the first, silver for the second and bronze for the third. And then all the other one will have this one, which is black and gray. Let's also add a snowman icon. I put it in the assets icon snowman.svg. You can find it in the final code repository. If we reload, we have an error. I think I forgot to add leaderboard to what our use game hook return. Go to use game. And the value here, we need to get the leaderboard. Okay, now no one played, we see nothing. And if we add like, you can see my score is increasing. If I send a gift, it kill all the others and it's working correctly, but I'm alone. So let's try to plug in that Playroom TikTok integration to have other fake players. We simply need to go to app, disable the debug mode and inside our use game hook, we will need to handle the different TikTok events. So we know what is the content of the event. We already looked at it before. We need to get the player from it. We will just store the username and the user photo URL from the event. And then we will do a switch on the event type. If it's a chat, we will dispatch the attack with the player and the name of the snowman we want to attack is inside the comment. It's what the user typed. If it's a gift, we want to dispatch a bomb. And if it's a like, we want to dispatch the like action. Let's try it. Type test username. We will do a real one later, waiting for the stream, and then start. And it's rich people, they send gifts a lot. I don't think in a real case scenario it will send as many gifts, but maybe if you have a nice community. So you can see our scores are increasing correctly and the ranking is correct. But we will have an issue when we have too many players. We need to scroll to see uh, the last player score. So we'll make an auto scroll on our leaderboard. With React, it's pretty simple. Go to UI. Inside a use effect, we already have our a reference to our leaderboard. It was for this purpose that we had made it. We will simply create a variable to end. And in a set interval, every almost five seconds, we will scroll either to the end or to the beginning of the zone. We can also store it in a variable and cancel it if it's called again. Okay, now if we wait five seconds, we should see it animated from the beginning to the end. Perfect. We can re-enable the debug mode to do some adjustment on our game and to improve it. It's not finished yet. Currently, our games never end, so we can kill a lot of snowmen, but we need to have an end. We will add a timer to decide how long the game will last. Inside our state, we already prepared a timer of zero, but we will need a different value. Let's go to number of snowmen and add another variable game time. Let's make it by default to 10 seconds so it will be easy to debug. Then where we have our set interval every 100 milliseconds, we'll do one for each second and we'll dispatch a new type of action, which will be update loop. It will just increase the timer and handle it. Let's go to our game reducer to handle it. So first, when we start the game here, we want the timer to be equal to game time. So we have 60 seconds or now it's 10 seconds. Then it's only if we are playing because we don't want to update the player if we are in the lobby or in the ending screen. We can make it below this condition here. So if our action is update loop, we will decrease the timer. If it is equal or below zero, we will return game over. So we change our gaming state to show the final game over screen. And we return our state with the new timer value. Let's check we already return it here inside our hook. And yes, so now we can display it on the UI. We need the timer here and then next to debug mode here we'll add our timer we just display the value on the right of the screen so it's not hidden by the chat messages of TikTok and because we now have a new state which is game over 
Let's add a game over screen with a dispatch of restart to start again playing the game. So let's also handle it in our use game function. Next to the start, we'll do if it's a restart, the status will be start. So we will have to uh, click on start button. We reset the timer, but it doesn't have a real importance because it's set when we do start and we empty the leaderboard. So it starts from zero. Let's try it. Start. We have 10 seconds. Let's try to kill some before it ends. And we have the game over screen. We show the leaderboard. So even at the final stage, we show our users what is happening. We have the play again button, starting screen, and we can start a new game without reloading the page. I also prepared a 3D stage when the game is over so we can see all our character dancing. I used the same process I used with Mixamo. We are reusing the center, but it's a different one. You don't need to use the same model. We will just export the whole scene with all the characters and we'll play from one GLB. So the model is final. It's here. Yep. It is five megabytes. It's not a big issue because only the streamer need to load it. It's not meant to be opened by many users except that the streamer. So you don't have a lot of optimization to have in mind especially the large uh, file size. What will be important is that it is not laggy for the game when it's running, but the loading is not so important. Let's run our best friend GLTF JSX with the final stage. So a component named final and final.glb. Start the development server. Okay, let's open final, rename it final. And we will just need to play all our animations of our character. So inside a use effect, we will loop through all the different actions that are in that GLB. And for each of them, we will set them in repeat mode. We will set clamp when finished to false. So it won't stop when the, it finished the animation and we will play it. So what we want is that each animation is individually restarting again. It doesn't wait the other to play it. Let's add it into our experience. Here we have the right position I found was minus two on the Y axis. I rotate it a bit so I don't have to move the camera. It's a lazy solution. And visible will be equal to status equal to game over. By doing that, we are sure that it is loaded and the transition will be immediate. Let's see if I didn't do any mistake. So we have our game session. We have the timer decreasing. And we have our final stage here where we can see the nice dance party of the saved Christmas. Before doing a session on TikTok, let's add just one gameplay thing is to display a grave where we killed someone so the user know who killed uh, which snowman. To do this, I prepared a grave model. So it's the one we have from the K kit but I added a plane in front of it. If we go to UV editing, I just added a plane so we will display the user avatar here so we can easily know who killed uh, which snowman. So get the grave model from the final repository, GLTF JSX, let's name it grave and grave.glb, yarn dev, okay. Go to grave, let's rename it grave. And here we have the texture material user. We need to replace it with the user picture texture. What we will need to do is to get the player and the rest of the props. We will store the user picture inside a texture. And here, instead of using that material, we'll be using a mesh basic material with the texture using the photo URL. Now inside our experience, inside the group containing the snowman, we can check if our snowman is dead, then we will return within suspense because it has to load the image URL so it can take time. We'll use the grave component. Position Y will be equal to one. Position Z to minus 0 0.5. So it's in front of where it died. And the player is in snowman dot killed by. It's where we store inside the snowman who killed it so we can have access to its username and picture. Let's try it. Press start. We can put like. And we see the grave, but it's following us. We want it to follow the background. 
to do this, we go to grave, add a use frame, and the same logic. We decrease its position by scroll speed and delta. We also need the reference to the group, so ref is equal to ref, const ref is equal to use ref. If we try it again, start, like, and we can see all of them that dies and it follows nicely the game. Before adding nice visual effect to the game, let's try a real session on TikTok. So first, go to app, disable the debug mode. So now it's ready for TikTok, but it's on my desktop. I want to try it on my phone device because it's the streaming from the mobile. But if you are streaming your desktop, it could work too. So to try your project on your mobile device, you can just run yarn preview dash dash host and use one of the following URLs. Me, I will need to use another system because I'm at my office and the, and the Wi-Fi is secured, so I can't follow those URLs. It won't work for me. Instead, what I will do is yarn dev. I will keep this URL here and in another terminal. I will run ngrock http and the address of the project. So localhost double dot 5173. It will create a bridge over the network so I can access it on my mobile without the Wi-Fi restriction I'm facing. So on my phone, I will just need to follow that link. So by doing this, I can see on my phone, the website is working. So now I will stream it over TikTok. So I open TikTok application. I switch to live and mobile gaming mode. I click on go live and I choose screen broadcast. I will display directly my screen on TikTok. Start broadcast. So now I can choose go live now. So I'm currently live on my mobile. I will have to open. I open the project on my phone. So this is what is displayed to the live users. So my account is playtime.live. So it's waiting for the stream at the beginning, but because I'm actually live, it's correctly working. It's displaying me the game. Let's switch back to my screen. If I search for playtime live, I can see my account is live right now. I can open the stream and I see my game from my phone displayed on live. Of course, it's better interface if you open it on a mobile device. But handling two mobile devices at the same time is quite difficult. So now let's start the game on my phone. So on my phone, I can see the game is running. There is a slight delay between the live, of course. And if I try to play, oh, but the time is so short, I need to update it. Let's update the game time to 60 seconds. Now I should have some time to play the game. On my phone, I can cheat a bit because I see the live in advance. So I know there will be socks. I can start typing it and I can see socks. I enter some comments and jingle and I can see that I'm doing some kills. So it killed jingle. Let's try another one, Rudolph, and it kill it. We can see the picture on the phone. Now we should see it on the live. Of course, alone, it's not the best experience, but having a lot of users sending likes and gifts create a very nice experience. And when the game is over, you have the leaderboard, you can play again exactly what we have built. To do some live on TikTok, you need 1000 subscribers. So we have a test account here. But don't hesitate to follow my wawa.sensei so I can create live on my own account in the future. Our game is looking nice and it's almost finished, but we can make it look even better by adding some effects. Let's go back to app, enable debug mode, and we will start by adding shadows. So we have shadows enabled by default. We go to experience, we need a light that casts shadows. Let's add it globally here, a directional light, a bit on the right and from the front of the sentence snowman with a middle intensity and casting shadow. But we need to go through all our model to cast and receive shadows. So let's go step by step. We have the game board. On every mesh, we need to ask cast and receive shadow. So we can do a search and then replace it with cast shadow and receive shadow. Do it globally and it's a faster way to do it. I don't know if there's a better solution. Then what do we have? I think we have Senta. Here we only have to do it for the skin mesh, so it's easily done here. Snowman is exactly the same on the skin mesh. Cast shadow and receive shadow. And then we have the grave. We have this one here, cast and receive shadow. We don't care about the plane with the picture. 
and we can add it to the final stage too. So we have um, the skin mesh cast shadow, receive shadow. Let's do it for the different characters. But then for all the different meshes, we will do it with the same principle. So replace with mesh cast shadow, receive shadow. Let's add some bloom to the name to create a better effect. To add post-processing effect, we need to add yarn at React 3 post-processing. Inside our canvas, let's add the effect composer and the bloom effect. So be sure it's uh, the one from React 3 post-processing and effect composer also from React 3 post-processing. Now let's go to our snowman. For the mesh standard material for the text, we will enhance it. We will keep its color to red, but we will add some emissive color. So emissive will be orange. The emissive intensity will be 2, and we need to set tone mapped to false. Now we have that nice bloom effect over the character names. What we want to do is when a snowman is dead, when it reappears, its name is displayed by default, but it's not attackable before it reaches us here. So we will fade the name in and out based on if it is attackable or not. So we need a reference to it, name material, const name material is equal to use ref. And inside our use frame, we will set its opacity to alert function based on its current opacity. And if it is attackable, it will be displayed. If it's not, it will fade out. And the speed you can adjust to your like. Don't forget the different is import. So lerp. And is no man attackable? We get it from the use game hook. So is no man attackable? Use game. I'm not sure we exported it. So go to use game. And in the values, let's make it available here. Now let's start. If we kill one, when it's coming back, its name is not displayed, and now it's attackable, it's fading in. Now the final touch, when we throw a bomb, we want to see a nice explosion, a Christmas explosion. I prepared a component, I will show it to you. So new file, explosion.jsx. I'll paste the whole code. I've prepared different colors, so we will choose one randomly and animate it. We have animated boxes that will adjust their position and move to create an explosion effect. We are using instance mesh for having good performances, whatever number of boxes we want to display. And our explosion has different parameters. The number of animated box we want, its position, and the limit we use for the range of the explosion, its scale, and if it is multicolor or not. Let's add it to the grave. So we know when we display a grave, we want to show an explosion. So let's import it. I made some limits, a scale, and I don't want the multicolor, only for the big bomb we want it. Let's try it. If I put like, you can see that nice explosion. It's based on the one we made for the multiplayer game with Playroom. Now to make the big explosion for a bomb, we need to know when a bomb is active. So let's go to our use game hook, create a show bomb from the state show bomb let's find the dispatch show bomb by default it will be equal to false then we will create a use effect based on if we have show bomb we will wait 900 milliseconds to display the bomb and we will dispatch hide bomb to stop showing a bomb let's go to our game reducer and handle the hide bomb we can make it anywhere here if we have hide bomb we will set show bomb to false. And we also need when we do a bomb here, we'll set show bomb to true. And to prevent to have multiple users throwing bomb at the same time, we can check that we are not currently showing a bomb. Now let's go to our experience. Let's get the show bomb from our use game hook before the snowman. If we have a show bomb, we will display an explosion. Let's try it. 
And we have a crush. Uh, show bomb is not defined in game reducer. Okay, let's search for show bomb in game reducer. It's uh, oh, here, it's state dot show bomb. Let's try it again. The like, we have the nice explosion effect. And if we send a gift, we have that nice Christmas bomb effect. Perfect. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and are excited to create your own live video game. As TikTok requires a minimum of 1000 followers to go live, I invite you to share your account in the comment section, so we can follow each other to get access to the live streaming feature quickly. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to get notified when I release new tutorials. Christmas is coming soon, so I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I will be back in mid-January with exciting new videos. If you want to learn more about Playroom and React Refiber, I recommend you to watch my multiplayer game tutorial, available here.